Well, hello, Tipton Baptist. This is your Friday Word of Encouragement for today, October 29th, 2021. I come to you today with an encouraging thought about the value and sufficiency and the goodness of God in giving us a scripture of His, a series of words that are from His heart and His mind set on paper. The value and the sufficiency of scripture for our faith to grow and for our relationship to be strengthened with Jesus Christ is beyond compare. That's the such value of the scriptures and, and what God does through it and with it in the lives of his children. And so I want to highlight that as we're entering into the weekend that is Reformation Day weekend, October 31st, 1517, uh, what is widely known as the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. Um, the Westminster Confession of Faith is one of the most important Protestant confessions, which is very reformational in its concept. Um, the Westminster divines began their confession statement with sacred scripture. They were concerned about two principles. One, which is at the very heart of Christianity, is the concept of divine revelation. Christianity is a revealed religion constructed not on the basis of speculative philosophy, but in response to what God himself has made manifest. And we know what he's made manifest or known about himself in scriptures. The value is beyond compare, and we have them in our fingertips. Second is the principle of sola scriptura, developed by the Reformers. It acknowledges that the final authority in all matters of theology and in all controversies of faith and life is not the decrees or traditions of the church, but sacred scripture itself. The Westminster Confession affirms the central importance and sufficiency of scripture, which is again a reformational concept. We say that Scripture is sufficient because it contains the truth of who God is and the truth of God's actions and heart toward mankind. The truth that God has every right to exert His wrath on you and on me, but in the truth we know God's mercy and grace as exhibited and experienced in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. This is an amazing series of concepts and the writing of scripture. It's amazing and it's valuable and it is more than sufficient to have a relationship with God. God has revealed himself in a very evidential way using his word. We have the scriptures at our fingertips. The, re- the, the reformers were absolutely set on getting the word of God into the hands of people so that their eyes could be laid upon it, read it, and the spirit of God can move hearts and stir hearts to be saved through Jesus Christ and faith in him. This is amazing that we have this book of God. God is so good to us to give us his truth in this book. You know, I think of uh, Jesus when he was praying his high priestly prayer. We have it recorded in the gospel of John chapter 17. Beginning in verse 13, we read these words about truth. Jesus is is praying for his disciples and his uh, concluding of his ministry as well. And we read these words of Jesus's prayer. I'm coming to you now, Jesus was saying uh, to his father. I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. And then Jesus said these words, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. The reformers were absolutely intent on getting the word of truth into the hands of the masses. And through God's gracious moving in the hearts of many people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who ended up losing their lives, um, many of them did, uh, we now have the freedom to worship the way that we do with scripture in hand. And God used a lot of people in a lot of difficult ways to give us this valuable, sufficient book in our language and in various languages around the world. The work of men like John Wycliffe and William Tyndale in the 13 and the 1400s laid the foundation for these men seeking the church to be reformed, to go back to the authority of Scripture. We have this in our hands because of the beginnings of God working through men like this. We have much to be thankful for this weekend as we go into Reformation Sunday this Sunday. We have much to praise God about. We have his word in our hands. 
take a minute and just ponder what it is that you have in your hands, that you have likely around your house. Think about what it is you have access to on your phone. Think of how God has blessed us with so many translations of His Word. There there are translations we have, of course, many of you like the King James translation, the Old English version. And while that is no longer our language, we don't speak with the King's English. We speak in American English. We have this old version that is still sufficient to be read. We have versions that are in our language, like the New International Version, that is very much an American-style English that goes around the world and can be understood widely. We have the English Standard Version and the New American Standard Bible, probably the the two most accurate English written translative Bibles that are in the world today, directly from Greek to English in the New Testament, unlike its predecessor, the King James. We have all kinds of different study helps at our fingertips for us to learn and to uh, become more aware of what the authors intended in Scripture so that our relationship with Christ grows. All much of this is because of the work of the reformers who wanted the word of God in all of its sufficiency and all of its value to be in the hands of the masses. I praise God for this weekend because it is a weekend that we do remember many who died to get the word of God into the hands of the living. So may I encourage you, think about what it is you have in your hands. Think how you are able to commune with the living God through faith in Jesus, because of the book that's been translated from the original text in Greek or in Hebrew, or a little bit of Aramaic there in Daniel, but it's been translated from the original languages into your English language. Think about what it is that you have in your hands and all of the effort it took to get it there. Let's not take lightly the fact that we have scripture and we have a need for our hearts to be continually reformed and reshaped because of the truth that Jesus said sanctifies us. So let's go into this Sunday excited to be in the word of truth. Let God uh, sanctify you. Let him form you more into the image of his son. Let him shape you more to be like Christ because of your time you spend communing with him in his word that is so valuable and more than sufficient. I praise God with you for his word. I praise God that I have the opportunity you've given me to study it and to turn it around on you, that it might encourage you and that through the the Holy Spirit, you might be inspired to go and to want Christ to be seen vividly through your existence. I pray that'll be the case this week as always. Um, So be in the word. Look at John 17 if you have a few minutes. Read the priestly prayer of Jesus for us, for the disciples then and for the believers now. Read what it is that he does as an intercessory prayer warrior on our behalf. Read what it is that he intends for us to have. Joy is something you'll see throughout the passage. He wants us to have joy, which is contentment and all satisfaction because of knowing him personally. And we know him personally through his word. The Holy Spirit is good to help us understand it. God is good to give us all the translations that we have. Praise God with me in this this weekend. So be encouraged. Get in John 17. Read the word. Wherever God has set you, go back and read it again. Thank God for the passages that you have set before you. And no matter what happens from day to day, as busy as we get, uh, don't forget to stay in the word. Uh, until Sunday, I look forward to uh, to preparing for worship with you. We'll have a wonderful time together. Don't forget, those of you watching, pass the word along. There's a business meeting after church this Sunday, immediately following the service, a quarterly meeting. And please be sure to let others know that after the evening service, there's a pie social. And then don't forget on the 14th of November, there is a Thanksgiving fellowship meal, November 14th, directly following the morning service. So spread the news. I know Kathy put it on the email, but just be sure everybody knows about this. So until Sunday, we'll see you. And again, stay in the word. Bye-bye.